more people that are embodied in their beingness, embodied in their gifts, embodied in their talents, embodied in their art. And then from that place, how are we painting this beautiful canvas we call reality together? Here we are, yet again, another episode of Freedom Culture Podcast. Mm. My name is Julian Guderlei, and with me is the gorgeous Samantha Lotus. Thank Hi, you. Sam. Thank you. I'm feeling hot and sweatier than gorgeous, but I really appreciate the compliment. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely hot and sweaty is part of the jungle experience. It's like 30 degrees Celsius. It's an afternoon. I just went for some body surfing. Ooh. I feel very refreshed. Amazing. And very happy to sit here with Sam because you're... You're a friend of mine, and that feels really good. Mm -hmm. But you're also just one of the absolute geniuses behind this entire convergence of the Freedom Culture Mastermind, the Freedom Culture Camp at Envision Festival, the many, many different media production pieces we're kicking off this weekend together. Yes. So Sam, I want to hear about you. I want to hear about how Sam thinks, works, and feels, and... I just want to I just want to let you share first like what is it that you call your art in the world? Yeah, thank you for asking that. What is it that I call my art? That would have been very different a couple of years ago. I've been working as a health and wellness practitioner, a life coach and a business coach for about 11 years now. So I would have said you know, helping people transform and optimize and step into a different iteration of their greatness. And while that's really true, right now my art is embodiment. Rather than teaching and rather than just coaching and rather than just speaking, really being. Like really leading from a place mm -hmm. of who I am being and becoming rather than simply what I am speaking and teaching. And it's about the energetic. Because, you know, you'll hear me say this often, the way you do anything is the way you'll do everything. And totally. a lot of people hear that. But what does that actually mean? The way, for me, is the energetic, the way in which you be. And, and that's really what's most important. All the other things that you do in the world, like how you love, how you teach, how you show up, like those are all great. And those are just extensions of who you be. And that's what I'm really excited about. Because that's what the world needs. More people that are embodied in their beingness, embodied in their gifts, embodied in their talents, embodied in their art. And then from that place, how are we painting this beautiful canvas we call reality together? Powerful. Because I know that you're walking your walk. You know, you're walking your talk. You're actually living it. You're being it. And what that also means for me is like every day is different and some days are very much the days to lay down and rest and other days it's the time to produce 50 episodes of a podcast in the jungle. Yeah. Um, Sam, what does holistic activism feel like to you? Because mm. you're an activist at heart from where I'm looking at you. Mm. Yeah, holistic activism. What does that feel like? First, I'll say what that means to me. Mm -hmm. Holistic activism means looking at the entirety of the paradigm, the entirety of the reality, not just compartmentalization. And again, the way you do anything is the way you do everything. So even if we take the body, for example, I'm working on digestion, the digestion is not just the digestive system. It is the nervous system. It is the environment. It is your relationship. It is your work. It's everything is interconnected. So holistic, holistic activism for me means, you know, recognizing that everything that we do is energetically tied to everything else. It is a biodiversity. It is an ecosystem. So recognizing that the part that we play in our lives has a ripple effect and it's connected to the web that is everything. And so really taking into account the interconnectedness as we're moving through life. So holistic activism is how can I show up in the world in my lane of genius, recognizing that it's connected to all of the different lanes of geniuses, and then how can I play with those different geniuses? Mm -hmm. And that's what we've really pulled together for the Freedom Culture Mastermind, yeah. right? Collaboration and co-creation and multidisciplinary approach to bringing in this new emergent paradigm that we know and we desire in our hearts. Very, very powerful. Because the word collaboration, you know, it's one of those words that I guess we've been hearing it for years in many ways, but also, collaboration is literally the time of now. Meaning, 
humanity has been so separated through nationalism, through all kinds of hierarchies and structures that haven't really served our collaborative nature. But I really truly believe that at the core of who we are, we are a collaborative species. Mm. And so, do you, do you want to maybe express a little more that, that you see as you're like kind of seeing you know, the, the world that is being built? Because we're in a microcosm right now. For all of you listening, <laughs> Punta Mona and Envision are a microcosm of awesome. Mm -hmm. And it's certainly an echo, an echo chamber of people that are super switched on. You might be hearing a little breath work in the background. People are getting out of their body with nothing but breath. Mm -hmm. There's people activating others with just like pure empowerment energy. And so for me, very often, I think about what would a world look like if that was the case in every city in the world? Mm -hmm. And then that brings me to this natural quest of are we a collaborative species or are we really a competitive species? And so I want to just throw that at you because I know there's so much bubbling in you that could, could answer that question. So anytime somebody asks me a question of either or, <laughs> I like to invite the the bridging of binary consciousness or of polarity and being, uh, we're both. We are both masculine, we are both feminine. We are both collaborative and competitive. We are both structured and flow. Like. It's, it's not either or and nothing really exists in those separate polarities and suffering I truly believe is by imagining that we do like left versus right this versus that how can we bridge them together and be in unity consciousness so how can we exist in a way where both healthy competition right like in sports and collaboration exists so it's yeah. more of a game how can we see this this reality as a game where we get to play where we can have structures and systems will also be emergent to flow, where we can come together, will also have our, our uniqueness, where we can be a unit while also being individuals. What would that look like if we surrender and accept or, or be curious to that concept? Hmm. Surrendering into the, the duality of those words or those meanings actually existing in a in a non-dual state of yeah, that complementarity. That they're oscillating. Because a lot of people yeah. also, you know, I was just speaking on stage about balance, I believe, is an illusion. Because balance, if you take a scales and they're balanced, well, that, that's just stagnation. And nothing mm -hmm. real. It, it's very rare for things to operate in full balance. Everything is always moving. And so what would it be if we play with the concept of oscillation? Like it, we're oscillating, we're dancing, it's this mm -hmm. flow back and forth and, and, um, and seeing that within ourselves and then seeing that within the world and how we're creating and how we're being. It's hilarious because every time I sit down with Samantha, I'm like, wow, she's such a philosopher. And it's maybe not the first thing, the first thing I think about you, but I'm like, oh my God, my mind is blown. Yeah, totally. That's the kind of conversation that I, uh, we, we should probably like set aside a two hour podcast for that. Let's do it. <laughs> but just to stay in the here and the now going to continue to challenge you with either or questions. Ooh, okay. Rapid fire, either or. Mm. Jungle or desert? A little bit of both. Coffee or tea? Tea. Meditation or dance? Dance is meditation. Alcohol or cannabis? Cannabis. Tent or cabin? Cabin. Oh, give me a cabin in the woods at Punta Mona with the monkeys in the jungle. And yeah, cabin. I like comfort. <laughs> Samantha, can you express and explain your own journey in some words around the concept of knowing thyself mm. and how important it is to truly truly ponder this <laughs> concept mm, i love we're gonna go into philosophy again you don't we don't really i don't believe that i know anything i believe things i perceive things and you know, I feel like what I've seen in, in a lot of the, the men and women that I've worked with is this anxiety around not knowing myself. I don't know myself. I don't know what I want. I don't. But what if you don't need to? <laughs> yeah. What if you do not need to know who you are? What if the, the rather than who am I? How do I want to be? How can I create myself if I don't know who I want to be? Well, if I get curious and play with it, experiment, who would I want to be? How would I want to be? How do I want to feel? Because I, we, we get stuck in these identities, like I am this, I am this athlete, and I am this, <laughs> yeah. you know, and, and, and that's, we're actually, identities are just constructs. Totally. So what if it, it's, it's, that's not even the right question? And that question innately holds suffering in it and can, c contraction. And what if we're asking different questions? 
Yeah, so that's how my know thyself journey definitely began, is asking yeah. better questions. Mm. And asking better questions for me really means challenging the questions I ask. So for a while, I really needed to ask why, like why am I here? What is my purpose? Why am I on this planet? And then I realized as I got more and more answers, and that's like a, a continuous download in, in so many ways, but I realized and started realizing that I also asked the question why in a lot of really inappropriate moments. Ooh, yes. When something really flat happens, that is just like a momentary occasion, let's say, I don't know, uh, my friend Mark Angelo takes a beer and spills it. And I'm like, but why? <laughs> If I'm actually asking that. I want to really know the answer, right? That's what I'm sharing with my reality in my universe. Mm -hmm. But do I really want to know the answer why that happened? And is that important? No, not at all. We so spend <laughs> so much time deconstructing reality where it's like, what if we were just to accept and be like, well, what next? Right? Like, okay, so this happened. Okay, wonderful. My favorite question, by the way. So now what? Now what? You know, and, and if you don't know yourself, okay, how can I experiment with what, what I don't know? I don't know what I like. I hear that a lot. Okay, well then, Google a hundred different things to try and try all of them until you find out what you like. And if you don't like any of them, maybe ask, ooh, why don't I like anything? And get to what's blocking you from liking, right? So this is a whole other conversation. But we can play with these questions to figure out who we are in the moment and even more fun, who we are becoming and, and we get to decide what that even means. Mm -hmm. There is no one answer to that. Yeah, I mean, that's why I think it's a quest. That's why I think know thyself is more like a compass north than anything else. It's mm. not like, oh, yeah, I have like a solid answer to this at all times. Yeah. But it's inside I know that this quest of knowing myself is my, my north star. Yeah, I, I, you know, I'm not going to just say don't know yourself. A great way to be aware is, is to observe yourself to observe your patterns, to, to, to know what triggers you, to, to get, <laughs> lost the, drop the mic, to get in tune oh with, my God. with what, that didn't happen before, <laughs> with what you like and what you don't like, to, to know what feels good and what doesn't feel good for you. <laughs> Just It's a very wild it. episode. It's a very <laughs> wild episode. We are in the jungle. Everybody yeah. listening and watching this, I hope you're having as much fun as we're having. We really are. <laughs> the, the reason why I mentioned that is it's, It's super important to go deep and it's super important to have as much fun as you possibly can while being responsible enough. These are all just my opinions. While being responsible enough to, to contribute into a regenerative world, mm. a world that generates energy and doesn't just diminish and you know, implode massive amounts of mm. energy or minerals or resources, you know? Mm -hmm. Do you want to say anything else on that topic or do you want me that to ask That was a another? random comment and, yeah. <laughs> and I love it. One of the questions that I ask is, am I contributing more than I'm consuming? Because that's important for me. When I think about the person that I want to be, it's somebody that contributes more than consumes. And I feel like we are, we have lived for many, many years in a consumer society, which is what brings us to a place uh, where we have faced some major challenges on a global level and in an interpersonal level and a personal level. And so what would it be if we contribute more, if we contribute more to ourselves, if we contribute more to our relationships, to our work, to our communities, to our environments, to the co-creation of this reality? What would that be like? Yeah. For me, that question really, really goes in, is like a consecutive answer of like, I know thyself. Like, so... When I kind of get what I like, how can I contribute that to others? Mm. Mm -hmm. Right? Or how can I let that into my life without like needing to necessarily just, just take it to get it, but to gift it and share it? Mm. Yeah. So, so Samantha, on, on, that, on that note, I want to mm -hmm. know, I want to really know mm. what freedom culture mm. is in your very unique and own words. Mm. Freedom culture. Yeah, we played, a, we played with this at the Mastermind. You know, some people perceive freedom to be without construct at all, just complete freedom of, of everything and, and no restraint, complete freedom. And, and for me, I kind of see that as 
as uh, anarchy in a way. It's I was so just polarized. About to say it. And then the other side, culture can can often be seen as oppressive and too constraining, right? Like no room for moving because it's so tight. And so if we're going to talk about the polarities of freedom and culture and how I'm on this mission to to end binary consciousness, well, what would it be to live in a society with systems and structures that 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 masculine energy that really empower us, really bring the opportunities for us to be ourselves, to feel safe and secure and empowered and in love with who we are being and to feel that we are good enough and that we are worthy enough and that we are deserving and that we are loved and that we get to shine. That for me, if we can create a paradigm and a reality where where that exists, that's what I'm working towards. That for me is what freedom culture means and feels like. Feels like rainbows and butterflies and sunshine and all of the juiciness when you're really true to who you want to be and how you're showing up in the world. Beautiful. In a world of others around you that are empowered and encouraged to do the same thing. Yeah. That's, that's I think, the, the most important piece to me is mm -hmm. freedom alone is, is, is still not really... It would be a prison. A pr yeah, yeah, it's still another prison. Yeah. Mm. Mm. I want to keep going with these questions. Mm. Oh, I want to say something. You, the word prison is huge for me. Okay, so prison. Freedom culture isn't just outside of us. It's not just in the society. It's not in the government. It's not in the education system or the banking system or any of those systems. It begins inside of us. Our bodies can be temples or they can be prisons, right? Our mind can be the most infinite divine mechanism or it can be a prison. And so how can you liberate yourself within and feel free within so that that is the way that you show up in the world and that is what you share? Because a society that, that represents freedom with people who feel entrapped and imprisoned within themselves, that's, that's an illusion. So how can we be liberated within ourselves first which I believe is self-love and cultivation, which again comes to knowingness and, and all of these things that we're talking about. And yet that I really feel is that seed that, that contributes and is imperative in the foundation of freedom culture. Wow. You know, you, you speaking about prison makes me think about schools. <laughs> yeah. So I wanna, I wanna hear Samantha Lotus's vision for the future of education. Mm. Ooh, this is this is huge. This makes me this brings tears to my eyes. This makes me sad. When I think about when I think about the school system and how I feel it really imprisons children and oppresses them to squish them into these tiny little boxes, these little pixelated units of how they sh they should be. I really dislike the word should and I really don't use it in my world and and so education in in the world of freedom culture is emergent where we are we are uh, being empowered to cultivate our unique gifts and through through a different way through playgrounds that are outdoors through you know living in here, communities here. and in eco villages and uh, where it's outside and and it's you know more teachers to students and they're learning in a way that is tactile and fun and playful where they really get to decide it's, it's self-based learning, but not just totally free with also some structure around that so that we can pull out their genius and reflect it back to them and create these environments that is empowering for these, these humans that are, you know, proliferating and continuating our reality. Mm -hmm. What do you imagine that reality you just described could look like, you know, if we were to play that out for a little bit and five years, 10 years, a decade or two. Do, what do you think would happen with the, the way youngster to elder and the generational mm. patterns mm. Might, might change? Yeah, what's, what's really fun and interesting is I've visited a lot of these conscious schools and holistic learning centers. Mm -hmm. And when you meet the children, you know, anywhere <laughs> from like three to 15 years old, they are so tuned in yeah they are so bright they're they're galactivated as david weber would say and and you really see like they're in their genius they're confident they're expressive yeah. you know psychological studies show that children that are being fostered in this positive parenting and positive educational way mm -hmm. are are testing at genius levels and so what would it be if we are fostering genius children to become genius adults i mean i feel like the solutions 
to the world's challenges will be implemented by these humans. And there's a lot of hope in that. I see, I feel a lot of hope for a future in that. You're such an interesting feeler and thinker as we're talking about processing and feeling emotions when we're feeling them and stepping into action instead of hanging out in the process space. Mm -hmm. Because you related to the question with education, with sadness, yet you come out of it with hope. And I feel that is incredible actually. Mm -hmm. Because there is a true sadness when I tap into the current educational paradigm on planet Earth. Yeah. There's a true sadness. Even when I look at my own very privileged education. And when I look forward, I always choose optimism. I don't even know why. I never, I don't even want it to change. Optimism for me is not a result of naivety or ignorance. It's actually the opposite. Optimism is a result of being informed and as grounded in reality as one can be and chooses to be and then realizes, now what? Because yeah, life is a quest. And realizing that you are the co you are the creator of your reality. And Isn't so you can so, choose yeah. you can choose realism where it's you know, or you could choose to be negative, or you can choose to see it in the positive space and the optimism. And then when you do that, you will create from that energetic. And so you are empowering yourself in seeing a solution and seeing things continuously being great and getting better. And I love that. And that's my, my invitation to everyone. How can you see the gold lining in all of your situations? How can you see that we're doing the best that we can? We all are. Mm -hmm. I believe that. And what would it look like to see that it's great and getting better? And how can we contribute to that? Really cool. Thank you so much for making this time, Samantha. Mm, it has been my pleasure. Thank you for being here. I have one more question for you. I have one more answer for you. My question... It's a little bit out of the blue, <laughs> but I really hope it stays in this show. When was the last time you had really amazing, juicy, yummy sex? Mm. You know, two days ago in that cabin in the woods in Punta Mona, uh, I was really in love and connected and delicious. Uh, in love and connected. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. It's really beautiful. Isn't Activated. that what we're all wanting to feel? In love and connected <laughs> with ourselves, with the humans around us, with the energy and the spaces we walk through, with the sex we have, with the food we eat, with the animals in our life. Ow, ow. Ow, ow. <laughs> with sounds of monkeys and I, rain I, I and think, the jungle I in the background. I think that's exactly it. I love you, Marcangelo. <laughs> Shout out. Hashtag. <laughs> Thank you, Samantha. <laughs> <laughs> I love how natural you are. Mm, I love you. You are natural. This is incredible. Thank you so much. Thanks what, for listening. Uh, before we finish, oh. before we finish, <laughs> Julian, what would be, what would be one of your tidbits, one of your nuggets for the world? Like, if we are stepping into this new paradigm and creating this world, how, what's something that you've taken away to stay in optimism and to see the world as doing great and getting better? Hmm. What a great question. So to stay in optimism and see the world as getting better. For me, it has a lot to do with the way we listen. Ooh. So what I mean with that is when we have a reactive answer to our problems and all of our solutions are just going to be like, you know, like a band-aid. It's, it's, it's like the SDGs are a fantastic tool to identify the world's biggest to-do list. And I'm really, really, really faithful in all the amazing humans who are going to find solutions to those 17 global goals. And yet for me, it, it goes way beyond that. True optimism starts when, you know, it took me like a decade to even be able to understand that myself. When we start listening from a place that is grounded in the humility of being connected with the earth and yet open to all the possibilities of not knowing because no one, not the CEO of Microsoft or the woman who runs the coconut store, the store shop down here at the beach, knows what's going to happen tomorrow. Mm. And so when we embrace that truly, for me, even though I do have a lot of plans, I also surrender the necessity of all my plans. Ooh, I love that. And I think that's the takeaway is mm. plans are great. Surrender is a tool. To, to consistently actually embody and live what we most deserve and desire. But authentic desire, or real desire, authentic desire from our soul that's in resonance with humans around us, that doesn't cause us problems, that doesn't cause us to need to clean up 
at the trail we left behind because it's a regenerative desire. For me, those desires start showing up in my field, in my awareness, in my interpersonal connections, relationships. When I listen long enough, when I'm listening to feedback every now and then, when I listen to the empty space, when I listen to myself. So it's just, it's just a form of listening. I love that, and thank you so much for demonstrating that, and thank you to everyone else who's listening. 